Hello, and welcome to this video on how to query data with sData. So we're going to look at various ways to get at the data out of Sage 300, accessing it using sData, using various um, query parameters. So first off, I wanted to point everyone to the reference site where you can learn a lot about sData. So that's at sdata.sage.com. That's a very useful reference for learning everything there is to learn about sData. So we'll just have a quick look in the browser. So here we have the website that you'll go to for sdata.sage.com. Now to point you directly to the sort of things that we're looking at in these first set of videos, this is all stuff in the Sage data, sdata core. So we go to that section and then within the sdata core there's a lot of links to things that show you things that use sdata, business cases, use cases, all that sort of thing. But assuming you know, you browse through that and you want to know the nitty gritty details. Then you click on, on the sdata core specification, sdata in detail, and you get the full specification for sdata. And in this video, we'll be looking at a few of the aspects from the queries chapter on filtering, sorting, sorting and paging. We also are looking a little bit at payload load control, but not in a lot of detail. Um, so just to refer you to this site, very useful site. Um, hope you spend a lot of time there. So in the last video, we saw how we could um, do this URL and get information out of Sage 300 on the customers. Now we're just going to be looking at a bit more that you can do with this. So first off, um, what we're always going to do is we're always going to be having the, um, the question mark or the, the question mark, the select equals ID name customer. So first off, just to choose only two fields, what we're going to do out of this, oh, sorry, just getting organized here a little bit, is we're always going to do question mark select equals ID cost name cost. Oops. And the basic purpose of this is to only return those two fields. So we know inside the Sage 300 customer table, there's dozens and dozens of fields for every record and then dozens of records. And basically here, we're just gonna tell all our queries to only return the ID of the customer and the name of the customer, just to keep the, the data that we're looking at a little bit simpler. And the other thing that we remember from the last video is that if you want to read an individual record, you just have to put in brackets um, the record that you want to read in quotes and using its key. So if you add bracket 1200. So we'll just have a quick look at that again in the browser. So we'll close this other window and paste in a query where basically this is the one that would get us all the records and we're just interested in this case in getting customer 1200 who's good old Ronald Black. So we hit that and we get a few links and down here we see that we've got the XML for 1200 and Mr. Ronald Black. So we've basically read that record and there's a few more um, things and some links and thing in, in the record but basically that's an sdata payload containing one record. So in future videos, we'll look at what all these other things mean, but um, for now, we're just gonna not worry about that, at least for the reading case. Now let's go just a bit more advanced and let's get rid of that 1200 and look at all the records. So we click this and now we get an sdata feed since it has multiple records and the sdata feed, which is basically an RSS feed, has a whole bunch, including 1,200, of names and customers. And we'll see that those go on and on. But if you're used to um, Sage 300, you'll know that down at the bottom here, um, customer 1580 breakaway designs isn't actually the last customer in the database. This is actually the 10th customer in the database. And what's happened is, you know, when we issued this query, the sdata, the sdata program knows that inside the customer database, there could be millions of records. And it assumes that you don't want a million records back. And by default, uh, the Sage 300 sdata service will return you um, pages of customers, 10 page, sorry, 10 records at a time. So you see in here, 
that the items per page is 10 and that's how many we're returning. So this actually return, you know, actually what it's telling us in the top XML if we bother to look at it for the um, RSS feed is that there's a total of 25 records and we've gotten starting at record one to the next 10 records. So this is basically over the internet. You, you know, we'd be waiting forever if, this, if we had to format an XML response of a million records and return it to us. So what it did was it actually just returned us 10, assuming that we want something reasonable. Now, within the feed, the sort of neat thing about SData or RS feeds in general is just to look quickly, we'll look at more details of all the elements of what are in this feed in future videos. But we have all these links in, in the video, sorry, at the top of the feed. And basically one is, is how to refresh to get the first page refreshed, how to go to the first page of records, how to go to the last page of records, how to go to the next page of records. And if we weren't on the first page, we would also have a link saying how to go to the previous page of records. So basically the feed gives you the, the number or, or the count of records that you asked for, but if there's more than that count in the feed, it'll give you these links to like the next page, last page, first page, and, and so on. So basically if you're doing a user interface program in your web page, you can show these 10 records in a grid and then have buttons for doing the next, last, um, previous, and so on, um, just directly connected to these links. And then if you execute these links, you'll get the records that the person has asked for. But in our case, suppose, you know, we're not really interested in that UI functionality and we just want to get all the records. So, you know, in our case, we say we know that we can handle a hundred records and, you know, for sample data, that's plenty. What we can do is we can just add on a little specifier on the end saying count equals any number that we want um, to get back that number of records. So for sample data, we could add um, count equals 99 and we should get back all the records that we want. So let's try that. So here on the end, now we've already done the select so we don't have to do a question mark again. And basically to add another parameter, you just put ampersand to say you want another one and then count equals 99. And then if we execute this query, we'll see that we go all the way down to the bottom and the last record that we got now is Webcast and the previous one, Bar Mart. So we got all these extra ones, you know, for the 25. So in this case, we did then get all 25 records. So you can try this yourself and just see a way to get all the records. And then later on, we'll look at what to do of all these links and, and look at some good ways to process those. But for a lot of cases, um, just getting all the records is what you want. So this is just, you know, just a quick first look at how we do that. So that's how we get all the records. Now, the next thing you might wonder is, well, how are the records sorted? And basically, um, the order by is going to be on the primary index. And the way you can specify this is you can go adding a parameter and, it's, and the, then the, the keyword is order by. And then that equals basically a list of the fields that make up the index. And in this one, we've just got the ID cast. So that's the one that we can use. And if we just go back here, um, it's not very interesting since this is what it would have ordered by on anyway, but we can go ampersand order by equals ID cast. And then it would just, in this case, just refresh everything since it was already ordered by that in the first case. Now, just as a provision, you can't order by anything because due to efficiency, we'll only let you order by things that have an index. So if I go name cast, um, I'll get back an error saying that there's no such um, index for this um, that particular field or, or combination of fields. So you just have to know right now which are the indexes that are in the Sage 300 database. In a later session, we'll look at SData metadata and how to get that information. But for now, we don't know how to do that. So we'll just um, take it on faith on some of these things until we get a more complete understanding of how we can do things entirely using SData. So that's the order by just, and, and that's maybe not so interesting in this particular table. But in other tables, it can make a big difference, especially when you're looking at orders and such. Now, the next thing that we're going to look at is where clauses. So this is all very interesting that we got 
you know, we can get one record or all the records, um, but suppose we wanted a range of records. And what we have then in SData is there's a WHERE clause. So sort of along the same lines of these other things that we've been looking at, we can go question mark WHERE and then a WHERE clause. And WHERE clauses are sort of of the nature like ID cust greater than, say, 1500. So that's an example of a WHERE clause. And again, we can just type it in here using ampersand WHERE ID cust greater than 1500. And if we did it right, hopefully when we scroll down, we should see only customers bigger than 1500. So, whoops, guess we did something wrong there. So, so to do the where clause, we basically type in ID cust space greater than space 1500. So it has to be where equals the field space. And again, this has got URL encoding. We can take this out. The browser is going to set in the URL encoding every time we do this. So it looks, you know, what we can do is type in something like this, ID cost space greater than space and then 1500. So in quotes. So that's what will get us the records bigger than 1500. So then when we look down, we see that we have the records for where we can find some records just beginning here. ID cost 1520 and 1550 and so on until the end. So there are some interesting things that you can do, you know, with a where clause. Now where clauses are sort of interesting um, in that we can also do more complicated things. So we could, for instance, go ID cost between three and nine and see if we get some reasonable records in here and we see that down here we've got records like 40, 30 and the various 7100, the things between three and nine. So there is an interesting query. We can also go and do things like um, using the like clause. So the like clause lets us um, basically put wildcards in here. So we can go say for instance using um, name cast and we can go like. Now we have to be a little bit careful here because um, what, what we want to do is we want to have um, space, oh sorry, percentage sign as our, um, as the wild card. But percentage is actually the thing where you specify the hex characters. So we have to go percent 25 for our wild card. And then hopefully we should get all the things that begin with bargain, at least all the customers. So we get bargain mart and bargain mart and bargain mart east, all those sort of guys. So out of this guy, I'll just show him at the end here, we went name cost like bargain percent. And then for percent, we just had to put in percent 25 because that's what you have to do to do the URL encoding. So in this, I just wanted to show some of the things that you can do um, with sdata to get at your data. And in these where clauses, you can do equals, less than, greater than, quite a few different functions and clauses, as well as you can use brackets and ands and ors to do quite complicated queries to get back the data that you want. So it's a very powerful way to inquire data, data out of Sage 300 and other Sage applications to retrieve the data you want. So here we had a quick look at, at select, reading, count, order by, and the where clause for getting data out using sdata. So thank you.